Hello everyone, I'm Shubh and you're watching F1 Aeronamesis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement aero and this has given me the opportunity to get an F1 aerodynamics perspective on aerodynamics. And my objective with this series of aero analysis is to give that perspective to you guys. So let's dive into it then. In this video, we're going to talk about the Aston Martin Racing front wing and try and understand how it works. It is a different wing because it goes away from the general philosophy on the grid in terms of the loading characteristics. Most of the wings on the grid are inboard loaded and then as you go outboards, they get progressively or sharply offloaded, right? But this wing is slightly different. As you go outboard, you'll end up loading it a bit more. And what advantages and disadvantages does this have? Let's understand this. So let us have a detailed look on the 2022 wing and the 2023 wing. And what immediately stands out is the aggressive loading on element four outboards. And you can see this from the curvature marked in red. And let us try and understand uh, the wing loading for these two different wings. The wing loading would look something like, like this, you know, slightly more smoother. Um, while in the 2022 wing, you would have a fairly conventional loading which would aggressively drop off. In addition to this, what you'll also see is that in top view, this wing would have, that is the 2023 wing, has more sweep as compared to the 2022. And this would change your center of pressure. It would make your center of pressure more diagonal for the 2023 wing. While for the 2022 wing, it would be slightly less diagonal. And both these factors land up creating a macro flow field that looks something like this. You have outwash on the 2023 wing and then inwash region like this. While on the 2022 wing, you would most likely have a flow characteristic that looks like this. Um, and this has this is very interesting because by changing the wing loading, although lift distribution across the span wise direction you've changed the way the macro flow field looks like and this is quite powerful by the way um, but do we really need this um, so let us try and see this region and what it lands up doing so this it creates like a form of circulation and this circulation lands up sitting onto the we say the mid wake or this region of the tire over here so it creates upwash you know that so there's upwash being generated here and it creates outwash that is this so this lands up giving you good mid wake management but then because it lands up creating downwash and inwash near the contact patch it kind of messes up your squish management which lands up getting drawn in boards thanks to the circulation and then especially in your instrument conditions lands up going into the floor and the floor is the biggest performance differentiator on this year's car and that is what you want to focus on now what the question kind of comes down to what can give you a better squish management then and the only way to get good squish management in this year's regulation i think is the front wing tip vortex and the front wing tip vortex combined needs to sit somewhere around here to for you to get good squish management and what teams have realized because they've all converged onto this inboard loaded concept that is this one and this one you could call as the outboard loaded concept teams have realized that having less upwash it's not really downwash but less upwash in this region um, and having an offloaded um, wing in the outboard section has, you know, is allowing you to have better control over the position and the strength of your tip vortex, uh, which is crucial for your squish management. And I believe that's the reason a lot of the teams have gone with offloaded outboard wings as compared to 
um, loaded outboard wings. You know, so the inboard loaded concept is the more dominant concept across the grid as compared to the outboard concept. Uh, the outboard concept works, as I said, as long as you have good squish management. And that is what primarily this year's car struggled with. I hope this video kind of gave you an insight. I know it wasn't the neatest. It was probably, it was my first attempt. So I hope I'm improving this, but I hope it's given you a nice insight into how complicated F1 aerodynamics and how non-linear it is. And I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.